to a nine is twenty nine. It says kill the those who don't believe in Allah. Even the people of the world. But you have to understand that those came at a specific time and context and no, that, when the no, Muslims no, were being attacked. And, and they were no, not referring no. to uh, no they're Muslim. not referring to, to Muslim, like no Muslims in general. They're referring to specifically Quraysh members. Exactly. And it's no, evidenced no. by his life by the fact see, that, that he see, didn't like go out and kill people like that's the problem. Uh, he didn't kill like see, he, you, him and the Nagus, for example, of uh, the were like really good friends. Like, yeah. But see, the, the, the point why is because you believe in something, because you believe in Islam, you're trying to defend it. And but see, we have to face the reality. I think that was my. Here's what it is. I believe in my humanity. Yeah. And the idea that I somehow worship some sort of like violent demon worshiping religion based you're taking the worst examples of humanity that are in Muslim and you're generalizing it to us. I'll take it's the same example. the same argument that people use when they target any other group of people. Absolutely. Oh, all the Christians are evil, oh all the Jews are evil. You know, Listen, oh this is no, a Jew with a no, pretty no. face. That's you whatever. can say do you know but there's they twice well. as many violent verses in the Bible than there are in the Quran. No. So you would well, it's think, not a matter of comparison. But, but it's no, not listen. a matter of no, listen. but what I'm saying is you can take anything out of context mm -hmm. and consider it to be something violent. But if you come to a religion with violence in your heart, you're gonna be violent. If you come to a religion with love in your heart, you're gonna have love. It's no, all the individual. I come to a religion that can change me, put love in my heart. If I have a love, I don't need a religion. I come to a faith yeah. that can change my heart. And but that's what, what, what I'm saying is, is the individual brings their perspective and their life experiences into whatever they no, practice. People are even I mean, quoting if, verses from the Quran if, that if aren't was, even interpreted that way by the vast majority of Muslims. If I could, if I could, if I could yeah, be a good person, then need Islam or any other religion. And that's, see, you're perfectly free fine. to have that. We, we, we support atheists, we support agnostics. But Anyone see, is today, free to do what they want to do. Are you a Muslim? Yes. Anybody comes against you to be because you're Muslim? No. I've been in America. Nobody have yeah, has come against me because uh, I come from an Islamic country. Nobody has you know, uh, no discrimination, uh, no attack, no uh, bias, no n n nothing. Yeah. But in my own country, my own country. Look at the. But then you're now. discounting all the women who have been attacked for wearing hijab. You're discounting the no. Bangladeshi no. woman who was Just killed. Just yesterday, go to Malibu. Who was killed? Go to Malibu in the park. In the Malibu park, so many Muslims. Nobody bothered. Right, but there are still incidences of violence against Muslims in this country, and there's we can't no, pretend that no, it doesn't there's exist. There's no discrimination First against Muslims. Uh, you know what? I don't want to have this conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah because, because we don't agree. Because we can't hear. Huh? Because we cannot hear. But you're not hearing me either. No, I hear you. I've been here for so long. Because see, you're. I hearing. was born here. I was. I was born in Iran. We, I was. Yeah, bottom we, we line have to is that I was born and raised under the fist of Islam. You haven't seen the reality of Islam. And we refute. We refute the tyranny. And the bigotry that you see in other parts of the Islamic world. That's all like that there we, is to say. We fight against tyranny. But even like what you're doing unknowingly, you are giving a right, good picture. Okay. You're, yeah. doing a, you're giving a good face of Islam, which is very evil. And that's the problem. Would you repeat that? Yes. Some people who basically claim to be Muslims and they have no idea what Islam says, or they do and they, they're trying to mislead people. What they do, they give a good picture of Islam and they say, oh, Islam is peaceful, Islam loves everybody. But based upon what text? Based upon what example? Did Muhammad have an example? We cannot look at a bunch of people and then basically decide based upon those people that an ideology is legitimate. We look at the ideology and we examine the ideology by itself. That what did Muhammad do? What did he say? He's the founder of Islam. So but, but is that strict interpretation or that uh, it's a plain hateful? Is it being... Yes, it's a plain interpretation. You don't have to even interpret. Just look at the text and you see the things Muhammad did, the things Muhammad said. Muhammad married a nine-year-old girl when he was 50 years old. He married? Yes, he married and he slept with a girl who was nine years old when himself was in, 50, in his 50s. So somebody who is supposed to be an example to the rest of the world probably should not have been sleeping with a nine-year-old girl. And that's the point that we have been, uh, those so-called peaceful Muslims are giving a good picture of Islam, while Islam has nothing to do with peace, nothing to, with, nothing to do with tolerance, nothing to do with, uh, with accepting others. It's all hate, it's all killing, it's all uh, intolerance. Look at the Pakistan. Can Christians and Jews find peace in Pakistan? Can Christians and Jews find peace in Iran? Can Christians and Jews find peace in Saudi Arabia? Can Jews and Christians find peace in Iraq and in, uh, in Syria and in other countries? They have been victims of Sharia law, victims of Islam. And uh, what is so sad is to see that some Muslims who never tasted the reality of Islam, they're trying to go to give picture, to give a good picture of Islam and to portray Islam as a peaceful religion. That some people have taken it out of context or to extreme and they're abusing it. But this is the reality of Islam. Islam sounds peaceful where it doesn't have power. 
But the moment they gain power, Islam gets its own way, then it becomes violent. And that's exactly what Muhammad did. That's why in Quran we see so many, uh, we see so many contradictions. Muhammad, in one place he says, oh, Jews and Christians are the people of the book. Then we see in other places it says, kill the Jews and the Christians and those who don't believe in Allah. So which is which? Muhammad said that peaceful verse when he didn't have much power, when he was in Mecca. Then when he moved to Medina, the same person, Muhammad said, kill those who don't believe in Allah. Kill them. That's why if you look at Saudi Arabia's flag, you see it says there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. So there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. And then underneath there's a sword. Meaning this was the motto, this was their message. Either you believe in Allah or we treat you with a sword. And that's exactly what I'm against and Islam is very evil very very evil and Islam hates people who don't believe and agree with it in fact the word Islam is submit it's a command you have to submit to the tyranny of Islam you have to submit to the law of Islam you have to submit to the uh, to the force of Islam and to what Islam tells you you have to submit if you don't then they treat you with a sword and this is not just in a book we see it in reality we see it in Muslim countries uh, and uh, both in action and in, in, in theory we see it and it's so sad to see some people are so deluded and so deceived that can't even believe that. But when she's saying that her her brand of, of Islam is true and the others are distortions, uh, is she right? Well, based upon what text? Based upon what text people believe that Islam is peaceful? Show me the text. And the radicals also bring their texts and their verses. And I mean, the ISIS, when they burned that uh, Jordanian pilot, they, uh, they put a a Quran verse down there that it says burn the enemies and the enemies of Islam so who is the enemy anybody who does not submit to Islam is an enemy that's exactly what Quran says anybody who does not submit to Islam is an enemy look at it uh, Saudi Arabia 1400 years ago was a place like Los Angeles or New York people had different ideologies people worship God or they worship idol Jews Christians everybody was free Khadija was a woman was a Jewish woman who was a, a businesswoman and Muhammad worked for her, and uh, Muhammad was his wife. Uh, it was Muhammad's wife. Khadija was Muhammad's wife. And the thing is here, 1400 years later, Saudi Arabia, women cannot even drive. There is no one single church, one single synagogue, one single temple in Saudi Arabia. So what happened to the all those people with diversity in, in Saudi Arabia? What happened? It disappeared because Islam cannot tolerate anything but but Islam. So that's the that's a sad day and the sad thing. Uh -huh. So are you saying that uh, that it's justifiable to oppose uh, Islam as a humanitarian interest? Well, that's the problem. They are trying to justify Islam, and uh, some people say, "Oh, let, let, let us give him a chance." Well, we have given the chance. No, no, I'm asking that that it, it, it that your interest is humanitarian to protect people in Arab countries or yes. Persian countries. Exactly, I'm I'm for the people because people are the victims of the ideology of Islam, and this is not something new. This is not something new that goes back to 100 years ago, or 50 years ago, or 20 years ago. This is something that has been going on for 1,400 years. Ottoman Empire, they killed 1,500,000 uh, Armenians. Uh, Muhammad himself, he killed uh, thousands upon thousands of Jews and Christians and minorities and people who believe differently. So this is not something new. This is the continuation of an agenda to take over the world. What we know as Crusades and the, uh, when, when the Europeans raid against Muslims was when the Muslims were trying to take over the Europe. And then the people in Europe unified and they pushed them back all the way to the Middle East. So this is something historical, something factual, something documented, something that is in Quran. The texts support what the Muslims do, what ISIS does. And uh, it's absolutely absurd to, uh, it's absurd to see that some people are trying to defend Islam while it, it's, it's not, it can't be defendable. I mean, take it to any court, Islam cannot be defendable. Islam is hiding under the umbrella of religion while Islam has nothing to do with the religion. It's, a, it's a, an ideology of hate and, uh, and killing. It's like a form of fascism and Nazism hiding under the umbrella of religion. And it's so sad that it's getting its own way and it's getting its way as a religion. Would you say that the rally here today is meant to soften 
America's defenses against uh, Islamic domination? Well, Islam has two forces. One of the forces of Islam is that Islam, uh, one of the forces of Islam are in the Western countries, say, oh, we're peaceful, we're good people. But back there, behind them, there's an army of violent people who are killing others. So which one we are to believe? Then we go to the text of Quran. And we go to the latter texts of Quran, and in the Quran we see that Islam says that kill those who don't believe in Allah, and uh, Quran says kill uh, the minorities. Anybody who does not submit to Islam is uh, is a kafir or infidel, must be killed. Jews and Christians, and for example, Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, and in Quran in Surah 9, the um, verse 29 and 30, it says the those who call Jesus the Son of God, it says they are deluded and Allah's curse be upon them. So this is what Islam is teaching. This is the hatred that Islam is portraying, and Islam is not peaceful at all, and uh, and we need to be vigilant, and uh, and we need to be careful who we uh, let in this country who we allow to come to this country. I mean Europeans, look at Europe, they, they opened their arms wide open and allowed thousands of refugees to come to their countries. America has, is, is the, the most refugees have been accepted by US government, by US, and they have come to the United States. You look at the Muslim neighborhoods, Muslim places in uh, uh, Michigan and uh, in Chicago and different areas in, in, in Minnesota. They're free, they're living their lives. They have their job, they have their business, nobody discriminated against them. Because nobody knows what Islam is. But thank God for media and for the internet day that people can see the reality of Islam in other part of the world. And we see that, I mean, those 19 terrorists who uh, committed the 9-11. Did anybody hate them? Did anybody uh, discriminate against them? Did anybody was, uh, was uh, mean to them? No. They do this because they believe in an ideology. They believe this because Islam is wicked and there's nothing peaceful about Islam. Islam is the problem. Islam is the ideology of hate. And we need to defeat it. We need to stand against it. And I see the day and I pray and I wish that we see, we have a day that Islam become illegal in the Western uh, countries and even in, in Muslim countries. Even in Muslim countries, I can tell you in Iran, 80% of people hate Islam because they have been victim, not, not a victim of a regime, but an ideology. Women have been oppressed by a man because of what Islam says. Islam says that women are half of a man. The value of a woman is half of a man. So we see that the hatred that Islam is portraying. Okay. Okay.